A maritime crisis has unfolded in the Arabian Sea, which has prompted the Indian Navy to take quick, strong actions. Shortly after, the Indian Navy received information that uh, a Liberia flagged bulk carrier was hijacked near Somalia's coast. In Arabian Sea, there were 15 Indian sailors that were on board the ship. The maritime force was pressed into action, launching an operation to secure the vessel. Red Sea, Gulf of Aden, Arabian Sea, all are widely used shipping routes. But now that they have become hotspots for attacks, especially in the past one month with the hijacking of vessels like MV Chem Pluto, MV Sai Baba, MV Ruin, and now the latest attack, the latest hijack of uh, the Indian commercial ship, uh, the question arises is, how do we safeguard our seas and, see our sh and save our ships from becoming prey to predators of the sea? Let's start our conversation. Commodore Anil Jessing on the telecast with me. Commodore, you know, uh, yet another instance of uh, a commercial vessel being hijacked by the Somalian pilots. And once again, there are a large number of Indians that are aboard that ship. Uh, why are these incidents recurring? Yes, you know, it is a matter of great concern because piracy of Somalia was something that had been rampant between the years 2008 and 2013. And then with the effort of more than 20 navies putting all their resources together, uh, this problem was sort of resolved. It was it reduced after that and had more or less become non-existent now. And therefore, the revival of Somali piracy is something that is that should be of great concern and is very disturbing. And obviously, it is an offshoot, perhaps, of the attacks that the Houthi rebels have been have been carrying out on ships in the Red Sea, which has encouraged these non-state actors to restart their activities. And I think that is something of concern because Somali piracy, Somalia is located in the Horn of Africa, and that is a critical route for most of global shipping. You know, 12% of all global trade. Uh, passes through the Red Sea. And ships coming from the Red Sea then have to turn and go around the Babel Mandeb Straits and are very close to the Somalian Horn of Africa location. And the unfortunate thing is that while Somalian piracy initially was restricted only to areas around Somalia, slowly it has spread. And if you notice, these ships are now getting hijacked in the North and Central Arabian Sea and not necessarily off Somalia. This leads to many factors. This leads to one, insurance premiums going up. The moment an area is declared a high-risk area, and, you know, even at that time in 2013, after that, uh, waters fairly close to India were declared a high-risk area. And that remained high-risk for almost three or four years after that, which led to much higher premium on insurance. And obviously, that led to more expensive goods being transported, prices of prices of everything going up, commodities, etc. So, we have to look at it very carefully. And India, I think, has given a very robust response. We have, without getting into any provocative action, we have monitored the movement of these ships. We've got very effective uh, maritime domain awareness, as we call it, MDA. We've got aircraft in the air. We have put our drones into uh, service. Uh, we've got five large warships, four destroyers and a frigate uh, patrolling that area. So it is unlikely that any incident will go unreported or untracked. Yeah. And therefore, every effort has to be made now to ensure that this can this is curbed as soon as possible and is not allowed to grow into the kind of situation that had occurred between 2008 yeah, and 2000. We're just getting to know that the Indian naval warship INS Chennai has been able to intercept the hijacked vessel, uh, Leela Norfolk. Uh, and uh, uh, the rescue operation is uh, uh, just about to be completed uh, and we have the surety of that. So, thankfully, those 15 uh, Indian sailors are going to be rescued and the ship, the commercial ship is also going to be rescued. But... Uh, uh, Commodore Singh, uh, these instances, and not just for the Indian sailors who, and the Indian vessels or foreign vessels that travel uh, along the Arabian Sea and along the uh, Horn of Africa, uh, these instances are becoming fairly frequent. Uh, why have there not been checks and balances put in place by... Uh, by naval authorities, by the naval forces across the globe, including India and America and United Kingdom, and all those who are massively impacted by these uh, exigencies, uh, to to stop the to not just no, not just wade off the pirate attacks, but but completely stop them. Well, you know. Uh... A lot of effort is being put in by navies all over the world. You would perhaps be aware that there's something called a combined maritime force, CMF, 
which is based in the in west asia uh which come which has navy which has ships from many navies of the world operating there there are four or five task forces as part of the cmf uh you know when piracy first occurred between 2008 and 2013 countries like india and china did not join the uh, the task force but coordinated their activities along with the task force very closely and that helped in you know escorting ships in preventing uh, instances of piracy etc now india is not only india a couple of years ago became an associate member of the of the cmf and has now become a full member of the cmf so therefore now uh, there it will also perhaps coordinate better with various task forces that are meant to check piracy uh, terrorism etc okay uh, as far as you know eliminating piracy is concerned these are incidents which will keep happening the seas are large the seas are a, is a vast open space so you cannot eradicate a problem absolutely totally you can suppress it you can control it and to be very honest with you piracy is not about those little guys and their skiffs coming and boarding ships with their ak47 kalashnikovs it is a much larger thing it's being financed from somewhere so if you really want to eradicate piracy it is not about ships you know apprehending pirates at sea picking them up arresting them landing them ashore with the law enforcement agencies it's about eradicating piracy at every level okay. from the pirating by financing that is happening by various state and non state actors uh, in various accounts all over the world absolutely uh, it's about uh, yeah. you know and that that, that brings me to like to an interesting well juncture state. in this discussion and ambassador sajan ar when we talk about security when we talk about warding of these attacks when we talk about combined efforts of the global navies of the world uh, to stop the piracy acts whether these are attacks that are happening from uh, uh, the houthi based uh, sorry the yemen based houthis or we talk about the somali pirates attacking number of these vessels uh, it is also important to work in conjunction with the state authorities whether in Somal somalia or in yemen but when we see these volatile unstable uh, uh, anarchies that are in place in in countries like yemen and in somalia uh, it becomes virtually impossible to control the situation from the land no you are very right megha i think you have to <clears throat> choose your partners you have to select your partners of course you have to show your own naval strength there and i think india has been doing that uh, in this part of the world we have been doing sort of you know this whole exercise on uh, uh, maritime domain awareness uh, not only in the arabian sea not only in this part but also bay of bengal and even as far uh, as uh, the south china sea you know even as far as the quad is concerned this is one of the very important elements of uh, cooperation between these four countries but here as far as this area is concerned you know as commander anil jai singh has mentioned you know earlier we have been india had really emerged as one of the most important uh, net security providers as far as shipping here is concerned and uh, we have been extremely proactive we have been uh, present there in large numbers i think what has really complicated matters mega at this moment is because you have uh, these attacks coming in uh, from yemen you know by the houthi rebels now the first two that you mentioned you know uh, mv kem pluto that was uh, uh, you know either a drone or a missile attack that took place on uh, the indian ship uh, till now meaning of course uh, america has said that you know this uh, attack came from Iran there have been some reports in India also that it uh, possibly originated from Iran we do not have uh, conclusive evidence to sort of you know prove uh, where it exactly it came from but uh, then you know this is something that uh, uh, needs to be investigated because we have remnants of uh, you know whichever way the attack was uh, done on that ship and that ship was uh, you know safely escorted to the indian ports the other one you know mv sai baba that was in the red sea and that also was attacked so i think you know this whole thing about piracy and about attacks mm-hmm. this, this has got uh, conflated this has got confused because uh, you know i think uh, the uh, rising insecurity in uh, first we were thinking it is around this area of red sea uh you know babel mandeb and uh, you know the area that is uh, closer to that region but then we have found 
that uh, you know mv camp pluto was uh, in the arabian sea on the high seas much closer to india and that is where the attack took place right. so i think really we have to uh, collaborate we have okay. to also see you know that there is a 10 nation task force that has been put up by the united states okay and so they are, fair you know, enough okay we need to collaborate uh, and mm. there has to be a uh, cohesive effort mm. quad being an example of it but uh, 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 coming to the point of how uh, mm. whether we can just contain this menace uh, by way of military action or do we need to take forward strategic diplomatic associations that we have with the countries from where these attacks are emanating from can also be a point of discussion and uh, carry forward these discussions in the direction to safeguard uh, our vessels and safeguard our sailors. Gautam Mukherjee, what do you think of that? To, to a certain extent, uh, this is a very plausible uh, suggestion. But let us understand that the Houthis uh, backed by Iran and the Somalians backed by somebody because they are going farther and farther afield are doing this in a strategic manner. This is designed to increase costs, both uh, insurance costs as well as shipping costs. Many of the shipping lines have said that we're not going to come through this way at all. We're going to go around the, the, the Cape of Good Hope, which means much uh, greater times as well as expense. Uh, we're talking multiples uh, in terms of shipping costs. Now, this is a strategic reality. The, the 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 Americans have threatened to attack the Houthi directly, which means uh, in their bases in Iran, uh, uh, sorry, in their bases in uh, Yemen. Now, uh, of course, this would escalate matters, and they are considering this carefully. Uh, perhaps uh, this will be done in another proxy manner so that America is not directly involved. But uh, definitely, uh, this is not something that is an innocent affair or the activity of non-state actors alone. Okay. Okay. Commodore Jai Singh, uh, when we talk about the formation of Quad and the seriousness with which the Quad nations want to fight the belligerence of the Chinese in the maritime regions, maritime territories in the Indo-Pacific region. Do you think we need something as strong, uh, uh, a cohesive force, as strong a block like Quad to allow for a deterrence policy to be built in the Arabian Sea? Uh, yes, of course, we need to have some sort of, we need to have enough robust capability to ensure adequate deterrence. There is no doubt about that. But once again, as as highlighted, this is more uh, more about piracy and, you know, acts of terrorism now by the Houthi rebels. It's not about any state uh, activity. In Insofar as the Quad is concerned, when you allude to China, well, I don't think that while it, it's it may be unstated, but uh, yes, China is a is a is a concern in the South China Sea and perhaps later in the Indian Ocean. But fundamentally, the Quad Quad's fundamental underlying principle is a free and open Indo-Pacific and uh, freedom of navigation at sea. Now, this is not against it, aimed at, against any state. It's again, aimed against any kind of threat, whether a traditional threat, a state-on-state -state threat, non-traditional threat, transnational threat. It is very important that shipping to this region does not get affected by any such maritime security challenge. And that is why, if you notice, even Eurocentric nations like uh, Netherlands, uh, the UK, Germany, who are who really so far had not really looked uh, at this part of the world, have now got their own uh, Indo-Pacific strategies in place. The EU has an Indo-Pacific strategy. Canada has an Indo-Pacific strategy. Right. Now, Canada would hardly be looking at the Indo-Pacific a few years ago because all of their trade, a lot of their trade passes through this region. 
सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ द ग्लोबल जी डी पी इज जनरेटेड हेयर सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड पॉपुलेशन लिव्स हेयर दिस पार्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड इज नाउ द जियो पोलिटिकल ग्लोबल सेंटर ऑफ ग्रेविटी एंड कैन नॉट बी इग्नोर्ड एंड देर फॉर इट इज बिकमिंग मोर एंड मोर इनकम्बेंट ऑन द नेवीज इन द रीजन एंड इवन द एक्स्ट्रा रीजनल नेवीज इन द रीजन लाइक द अमेरिकन नेवी और फॉर दैट मैटर द रॉयल नेवी to ensure that a rules based in, uh, order at sea is maintained uh, freedom of navigation is mm. maintained trade passes through safely and securely over the international sea lanes yeah. and individual countries can ensure that their sea lines of communication remain open all the time okay but uh, you know there's uh, more reports pouring in and thankfully so uh, mm, the ins chennai has been able to uh, take control of the hijacked ship uh, they have been able to sanitize the top deck and they have been i think we getting to know i mean we uh, uh, um, the likelihood of all the 15 sailors uh, um, to be brought back uh, safely into the custody of uh, of the indian navy is is largely likely at this point so so uh, commodore jessing the incident took place uh, and we got to know about this sometime uh, sometime uh, uh, around midday and uh, this entire operation has been completed in a span of just a few hours uh, this does this also showcase our capability uh, with which the indian navy operates yes of course without a doubt you know the indian navy takes its responsibility of being a preferred security partner and a first responder in the indo pacific very seriously i know we, we we attribute various terms to it net security provider which was a term being used a few years ago has come back into circulation now but without really defining what net security provider is uh, let me say that the indian navy's concept you know and that is why the indian navy came to something called multi mission deployments we have 12 to 15 ships deployed all over the indo pacific so that they can respond quickly to a developing maritime situation mm-hmm. in this case uh this when mv camp pluto happened after that the indian navy deployed four guided missile destroyers and a guided missile frigate now that's a lot of firepower to deploy to contain an act of piracy it was not so much just for that one act of piracy it was to send a message uh, which you had mentioned earlier about deterrence when you can project this kind of firepower to counter a threat a non state threat to the you know the asymmetry in this is quite striking actually okay. that so much firepower to control a small threat but the threat is not small in terms of the impact this can have on the global economic scenario Absolutely. if this is allowed to continue it can lead to repercussions Absolutely. at some point in time very serious implications Absolutely. for the safety of ambassador, shipping ambassador ambassador sajan are so uh, situation such as this this has been more frequent than it was in the past whether we talk about red sea the gulf of aden we talk about arabian sea you know the, off the gulf of uh, gujarat uh, that attack happened uh, and an indo pacific continues to be you know an egregious point when it comes to uh, the chinese belligerence now uh, uh, the seas of the world are uh, facing this uh, menace because of the middle eastern conflict that is currently taking place or uh, the conflict at this point of time where china wants to uh, you know invade and take total control of in its expansionist policy of of uh, the maritime regions of uh, the indo pacific region or we talk about the asean asean nations how can we how can equilibrium be restored in these areas keeping in mind as as commodore jessing said that uh it is it is of utmost importance that the economic trade routes that pass through these seas are not jeopardized yeah uh sorry uh you are very right megha i think you're very right when you say that uh, you know as far as the chinese assertiveness or belligerence that has been growing but i think that has been particularly a matter of concern as far as the south china sea is concerned because that is where we have been demanding the freedom of navigation freedom of overflights rule based international order and that is you know basically to respond to the challenge of china in the south china sea and to an extent in the east china sea you know because in the south china sea china has been uh, occupying these uh, islands uh, which belong to the other countries uh, you know in violation of uh, the international law that uh, uh, the un uh, convention on law of the sea 1982 and that is what has brought these countries together because uh, there is uh, you know so much of energy flows that take place so much of uh, volume of goods uh, traffic that takes place so you know i think as far as china is concerned 
it is of course it is expanding its footprint in the indian ocean in the bay of bengal in uh, the arabian sea etc but i think the immediate uh, uh, threat and risk is more in the south china sea as far as these areas are concerned again you know we have to uh, collaborate as you said uh, very correctly with uh, responsible stakeholders in this area and i think we have uh, the uh, we had very recently the visit of uh, sultan haitham of oman and you know uh, oman and many of the other countries in the region the gulf uh, countries they are very responsible stakeholders because mm. they also have an equal interest in ensuring in maintaining that there is peace and stability and tranquility as far as uh, global uh, commerce is concerned on the high seas so you know we have uh, of course been collaborating with the uh, uh with uh, uh, oman we have this uh, port of dukum which uh, we have taken we have also sort of you know collaborating with indonesia on the other side i think uh, if i remember correctly the name of the port is sabang where uh, i have been there uh, uh, in uh, you know just uh, after this agreement was signed and i think we really need to expedite work so that india's uh, footprint india's presence is uh, you know shown there it is visible there in those areas that having been said uh, mega you know all the new routes that we are talking about you know on the sidelines of g20 we spoke about the imec the india middle east uh, economic corridor you know from here multimodal transport corridor from india going by sea to dubai going through that uh, the uae and uh, saudi arabia through israel jordan etc to europe i think that is uh, a route which will uh, you know which will be able to ad- avoid the most contentious part that is the red sea and close to the gulf of aden right so that Absolutely. is something okay. fair enough yeah. uh, you know there are these alternative mm-hmm. sea routes that need to be created and they are being created whether we talk about the bri <clears throat> which is in favor of the chinese or we talk about the imec which is going to bring india and the middle east and europe closer together quickly a comment from you gautam then uh, when all the stakeholders all the, all virtually all the countries in the world are impacted adversely by these attacks whether we talk to talk about russia china india uh, the rest of the rest of europe united states of america uh, it it becomes it becomes a global cause of concern and that's exactly why the, these discussions are happening and these conflicts are happening and i i've spoken to a number of uh, uh, you know uh, captains and sailors who sail these uh, vessels who sail these commercial ships uh, merchant ships and and uh, it's 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 their plight as well because uh, uh, when the gulf of aden gets compromised uh, you then have to take an alternative route and a and a sea route and a journey of uh, of one particular ship traversing uh, starting off from one port and, and reaching europe or reaching america uh, would have lasted say uh, 30 days it would add to about 30, you know 15 more or 20 more days and uh, that's that's not just a, a high economic cost that a company has to bear but also causes lot of stress to the sailors who are present on the ship and and like i said because it's a it's a global cause of uh stress not just because of the more funds that you have to then waste uh infuse into into the ships being take harbor safely travels uh, uh navigate safely into the sea routes mm-hmm. but also the fact that there is going to be large amounts of businesses uh whether it is crude or other cargo that is being carried uh, uh, that ends up uh, you know uh, shooting the prices uh uh and and that causes economic global economic instability yes um you know maybe in addition to everything that has been said by the other panelists maybe uh the time has come <clears throat> to start patrolling these seas on a much more rigorous manner in a raft of different uh, navies uh, it has to be uh, armed vessels and uh, also perhaps accompanying or escorting uh, some of the larger ships as they travel through this area uh, to make it uh, very difficult 
for either the Houthis or the Somalis or anybody else to actually attack them. I mean, um, uh, Commodore Singh mentioned the asymmetrical response. I mean, we've used a predator drone. We put in the commandos. Uh, this is very robust action. So uh, as long as the ships are all over the place, up and down these areas, I know it's a vast area, but there is very elaborate surveillance possible nowadays. And with that, uh, if they are accompanied by military vehicles, uh, military ships, uh, it will be very difficult for this to uh, become a, uh, a, you know, something that stymies uh, the, the, the traffic through here. Mm -hmm. uh, Suez Canal is a problem. It's a problem also because it is out of date and this new IMEC corridor will uh, completely uh, change the scenario because the dependence on the Suez Canal will be far less. But that is in the future. We don't have it yet. And we've got an immediate problem. Right. Mega. Absolutely. Okay. I thank all of you for sharing your views on this uh, sensitive subject. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.